Bonjour. Ah, bonjour. Merci. Thank you. Hi. I'm Martin Cates. I'm the chair of the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television. This is the organization which brings together everyone working in film and television in Canada, whether they're working in front of the camera or behind the camera, writers, directors, producers, cinematographers, makeup artists, editors, actors, whether they're working in English or in French anywhere in the country, it's the only organization of its kind uh, in our country. And it's the one place where we can bring all of our various um, perspectives together. This organization started in 1949. The first film that won the first Canadian Film Award, um, it's, it's kind of uh, funny to think about it, but I want to take a minute and think back of, about where we've come from in the film industry in our country and then talk about where we're going. But 1949, a 17-minute short shot on 16-millimeter film called The Loon's Necklace won the Best uh, Film Award. And that was a movie that uh, took the story, a First Nations myth about how the loon got its particular uh, foliage and created a story which was actually told in uh, masks. It was quite innovative at its time. Um, and it uh, won that first award. Now, those awards became the Genie Awards. And then when television was invented, the Academy created a thing called the Gemini Awards for, film, for, for television. And this year, for the first time, uh, my Academy brought together these awards together with awards for new media in a new invention we called, we imagined, and then we called the Canadian Screen Awards. So Canadian Screen Awards took place for the first time uh, this past March, um, at the end of a week of celebration of Canadian creation in film, television, and new media, in English or in French, across, uh, across the country. And one thing that was quite interesting and, and resonant, I think, is that the film that won this year in the very first Canadian Screen Awards uh, for uh, Best Live Action Short uh, was a movie called Throat Song. And Throat Song uh, was made uh, by a young woman named Stacy Agluck McDonald, comes from the thriving metropolis of Kagluktuk in Nunavut, a town of 1,600 people. And it's a story of a young Inuk girl in a, an abusive relation, escaping a, and surviving a, an abusive relationship. And I think what's pretty important and significant and uh, dear to me about our awards this year is that Stacy was able to come from Nunavut to our awards show in Toronto, and she got up and was able to collect her statue as the producer of that film in her party gown and mucklucks. And it was really a transformative moment, I think, for us in the, in the industry. And it wasn't just because uh, Stacey Agluck McDonald was able to come and be here and collect an award telling a story from her place, in her words, um, uh, it, with her, um, uh, you know, as a young producer at the beginning of her career. But it was because of the company that that film kept with the other films, so many of the other films that were made this year and nominated for uh, Screen Awards. Laurence Anyway, a film by Xavier Dolan, which was the story of the transition of a transgendered woman in living in current day Montreal. Um, Inshallah, a film uh, about a Canadian doctor traveling in Palestine. Midnight's Children, Deepa Mehta's film about the adaptation of Salman Rushdie's iconic film, a uh, novel about uh, Indian independence. And of course, a film called Rebel, which in English was called War Witch, by a young man named Kim Guyen. Now, Kim, I didn't know this, is also from a thriving metropolis. I'm from Winnipeg, so I, you know, I can talk about small towns, but Kim grew up in Amqui, Quebec. Tu connais Amqui? 6,000 people live in Amqui. Kim's the son of a first-generation Vietnamese uh, immigrant who came to Canada. Sorry, obviously his father, first-generation immigrant to um, uh, Canada from Vietnam. His mother on his mother's side, he's 12th generation. 
and Kim told the story in Rebel about a remarkable young woman who survived uh, as a child soldier and escaped a life as, as a child soldier in uh, present-day Congo. It's a phenomenal film. It won almost every award we had, uh, including uh, director and uh, writer, but also including, remarkably, uh, an award for uh, Rachel Mwanza, who won for Best Actress, and for uh, Serge uh, Canida, who won for Best uh, Supporting Actor. And, uh, you know, we often have these discussions about how much French language uh, we can have in uh, acceptance speeches before our English language audience gets upset and sort of starts turning the channel. Well, we could turn that on his head because uh, Rachel gave her acceptance speech in French and Congolese, and we lost no audience whatsoever as we looked at the minute by minute. So I think that was pretty significant. Of course, that film went on to be nominated for a uh, Best Foreign Language uh, Oscar and, uh, and to be celebrated uh, around the world in Berlin and, and in other festivals. And that continued a, 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 an experience that we had in Canada. You know, last year, uh, uh, Philippe Falardeau's film, Monsieur Lazare, was nominated uh, for and won many of our, our film awards from the Academy, but also was nominated for Best Foreign Language uh, Film at the, uh, at the Oscars. And that's a story about an Algerian immigrant to Montreal who works as a public school teacher and his relationship with his students. And the year before that, the remarkable Denis Villeneuve's film, Incendie, which is the story of twins from Montreal who travel to Lebanon to, to uh, learn the, the roots of the, of the mystery in their family. And those films both went to the Oscars as nominees. Um, another film we had last year in, uh, in, tw in 2012 that was nominated for Oscar, a film called In Darkness. A very interesting film written by a Canadian named David Shamoon that was uh, directed uh, by uh, the Polish director Agnieszka Holland. David's a writer who brought this story to me and asked me if I thought I could help get it made um, a number of years ago when I read it. It was an incredibly moving story. It's the moving story of uh, some uh, Polish uh, Jews who managed to survive uh, the Holocaust um, and avoid uh, being uh, murdered by, uh, during the Nazi um, occupation of Poland by living in the sewers under the city of Lwów. And uh, I told David this is one of the most moving stories I've, I've read, but you know, I feel that there are just too many stories about the Holocaust that have been made, and it's very hard to raise money for, for a film like this, even though it's so novel and compelling. And I suggested to David that, you know, if only the film were written in uh, Spanish or, or Polish or German, it would probably get made as a European film and be very successful. And he took that um, advice to heart and went and had the script translated into Polish and, um, and actually co-produced it as a Canadian, German, Polish co-production. And it was shot in Polish and German by a Polish director. And it was Poland's nomination for a submission and then nomination for, for Best Foreign Language uh, Film that same year. Um, as a side note, I found out um, not that long ago, I was at a family uh, wedding and I, with some relatives um, of my father's uh, that I rarely see uh, who live in New York, and I learned that um, uh, two of my uncles uh, survived the uh, Nazi occupation of Poland by living in the sewers of Lwów. I had no idea about that, but it was part of my story, and it turned out to be part of the story of this film that uh, I may have had some uh, hand in, in getting made, so I was, I was proud of that. I think all of this goes to show that there are these stories of the Canadian experience that for the first time this year we see um, with so much clarity um, that we've managed to capture uh, a sense of who we are, where we are, where we're going, uh, not, as, um, not in any way in the same way that, that these stories would have been told in 1967, but in the context in which you know, our population is growing by 220 or 230,000 people a year um, of people who come from elsewhere, as indeed uh, we, we all did, save for um, the elder who, who blessed us this, after, this morning. And, and films that are not obviously identified as Canadian are also getting recognized uh, around the world. They're not recognized by our awards, but movies like Life of Pi, which of course, you know, is it a Hollywood movie? Is it a Chinese movie? It was directed by Ang Lee, but of course it was based on the Canadian uh, Yann Martel's novel. 
Um, it was nominated for Oscars, in fact won Oscars for the work of its uh, composer, Michael Dana, who was born in Winnipeg. Um, and uh, of course, it's a visual, remarkable, remarkable visual, visual effects that were created also um, here in Canada. So our stories make a mark internationally. In 2004, um, I myself was in uh, Los Angeles during Oscar season um, with a film that, that was mentioned, Hotel Rwanda. It was a script that was sent to me also. It was very, very moving to me. And um, uh, I asked uh, my friend who sent me the script, he said, can you help us get this movie made? And I said, that's the most moving story I've, I've ever read. Um, I, w I want desperately to help. What do you need? He said, well, we need uh, $20 million to make a movie. I said, OK. So I wrote that down. I said, how much have you got? He said, well, we have a meeting with Sony next week. So I said, you have, yeah, so you have nothing. He said, OK, I wrote that down. And um, we set about trying to find a way to raise the financing for this film that seemed like uh, an impossible task, but it seemed like one that I couldn't in any way avoid. And uh, I had had the pleasure of making a, a television series in, uh, in uh, South Africa uh, just after Nelson Mandela was released uh, from prison um, uh, called uh, Wild Side that uh, ran on Family Channel and on uh, Nickelodeon. And I had some contacts in South Africa. I was able to bring uh, some significant investment from South Africa. And I had some contacts in, in, in England. And I was able to bring some significant investment from England. And uh, the only way, it's kind of interesting, the only way to make this uh, film work uh, uh, was to, in terms of financing, was to make it as a, as a co international co-production, and that, so the film would qualify both as South African and as British. And while Canada has treaties with countries all over the world, there was no treaty between South Africa and, and England, and the Canadian treaty wasn't going wasn't to work, so we actually ended up um, using the uh, treaty with um, Italy, South Africa, Italy, uh, the United Kingdom. It was a massively complicated uh, structure, but we, we got it to work. And, um, and uh, as we were doing that, so I'm trying to figure out how much time we have. And I can't, yeah, can't quite there. tell. It's, it's, it's over. It, <laughs> so you it's, exceeded the, from two minutes like you're in the red zone. Yeah, Am I in the red zone? <laughs> OK. I wanted to ask you a There's question. a clock down here, <laughs> and it appears to say I have 46 minutes and 22 seconds left. <laughs> and I'm, tr I'm trying to comply. <laughs> so I'm going to skip over the, 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 the difficulties of Hotel Rwanda and just say, in cinema, it's difficult. Well, it is if, if the clock that's telling you how much time there is. It, I now have 80 minutes and 30 seconds. It seems to be going backwards. Um, all of which is to say, in Canada, we have a remar we're at a mar remarkable, I think, inflection point in our history in terms of story, uh, cinematic storytelling. I, I, if I can take 60 seconds, I worked in this building at the CBC in uh, 1988 and 89. We created a television series called Road Movies, in which we got these bulky VHS video cameras and shipped them to schools across the country to send kids out to record stories about where they're from and who they are in Canada. And we cut those together, a labor-intensive program. We got sponsorship from VIA and Air Canada. We flew these VHS tapes across the country, and we put together a television series so that kids could tell their own stories to one another. Um, uh, Ten years later, I was working at Microsoft. We created a thing called MSN, the Microsoft Network, and I hired a young guy named Rick Mercer to go out during the 1998 uh, uh, federal election with a camera. We bought a special camera, which actually had two megapixels in it. That's how powerful it was. It cost thousands of dollars. And we sent him out with a voice recorder and this fantastic, you know, very expensive camera. And he traveled across the country interviewing people. And every night, he would upload through his modem the story of what he heard from Canadians in different places, sometimes with a photograph if he had enough bandwidth on his modem. And that was the first ever blog, I believe. And this year, now 15 years later, with YouTube and Twitter were in a position where the power of CBC and the power of that camera is far exceeded by the cameras in everyone and the phones, the cameras in everyone's phones. 
And I think what we should do now, between now and 2017, is to head out with the studios we all have in our pockets and make a movie, tell a story about where we are in Canada, what our Canada is, what we want our Canada to be, what elements of Canada we identify with, and share those. We don't need a studio, we don't need politicians, we don't need a broadcaster. We can do it ourselves. That's my challenge. Let's tell our stories. Thanks so much, Thank you. Merci. Merci.